The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Okay, so 15 is probably one of the toughest problems you could get uh, in this whole trig section here. And we're going to find the function that most closely matches the graph. So I'm going to replicate the graph first as best I can. So we have four loops of what you should be able to recognize as either a secant or cosecant graph because those are the ones that look like they have all the horseshoes. And our max and min of them are 2 and negative 2. Let me put this on the other side because that's where that loop is going to be. So we have a loop here, a loop here, and it alternates, of course, like every one of these graphs does. And the last one is over here. So the last thing is where are these asymptotes? Well, this one's at zero, obviously. But these other ones are at 3 pi, and there would be another one here at 6 pi, so that these are at negative 3 pi and negative 6 pi. Alright, so this is the graph that we're working with, and we want to find which of these functions matches this. So there's a couple things you should think about here um, before you really start getting to the functions. So, this is either a secant or a cosecant, and it could be either, depending on how it's shifted or reflected or anything like that. Well, if you look at all your answer choices, none of these are reflected. So, we're dealing purely with shifts here, so no reflections whatsoever. There's a couple things you should recognize. There has to be a 2 in front of it, because the y's are all multiplied by 2, because 2 and negative 2 are our starting points. Well, that's every one of these, so that doesn't help us, but that's something you should recognize. The next thing is, remember that these, these functions always follow their uh, regular counterpart, and regular I mean sine or cosine. So this function, its sine or cosine graph has to look like this. And the reason I draw that there is because now it's sometimes a little bit easier to tell how it's shifted. Because if this is a sine graph, remember sine normally starts at zero and goes up. So if this is a sine graph, it's shifted an entire half period away. If this is a cosine graph or an inverse cosine graph, cosine starts with a max at the origin. So this is only shifted a quarter period away, not very far. So the other thing that you should recognize is that our quarter periods and half periods, what's our entire period for this graph? It's 6 pi, which tells us that we have to have a one-third in front of our x. Again, all of them have that, so that's not very helpful. So let's think about what we can eliminate right away. Well, we can definitely eliminate answer choice E, because that would be a sine graph that's not shifted, but this clearly has to be shifted because sine does not go that way from the beginning. So E is certainly wrong. So now we're either a cosecant or a secant graph that's shifted left or right, and these factors here are pi over 2. Remember though that to actually find the phase shift, you have to factor out the number in front first. So I'm just going to take the inside part of all of these, either 1 third x plus pi over 2, or 1 third x minus pi over 2, I'll deal with both, and we'll see what happens. If we factor out the one-third, what would we get? So remember, when you multiply the one-third back, you have to be, you have to get out pi over two. The only way that could happen is if it was right plus or minus three pi over two. So all the remaining four choices here all actually are of this form. 
when you take out the one third. So they're shifted left or right by three pi over two. So let's just start looking at our graphs, our sine graph and our cosine graph, and see if we can get that to happen. Well, if we were talking about our sine graph, remember that your sine graph normally would start here. In order to get to this graph, this sine graph, from the regular one, we either have to shift left or right by the same amount. And what would that amount be? It would be a full 3 pi in either direction. All of these answer choices are only shifting by 3 pi over 2. So that tells us right away that the sine, therefore the cosecant graphs of our answer choices are all incorrect. So B and D, definitely wrong, because it would have to be a shift of 3 pi if it came from a sine graph or a cosecant graph. So let me erase this to now show the secant graph. And now with the secant graph, we only have two choices. So this should be an easy distinction to make. Normally your secant graph the, co or the cosine graph that goes with your cosine graph normally would start there with the maximum at the origin. So you should see here that to get to the graph that we're, we have, we need to shift this left by 3 pi over 2, half of 3 pi. 3 pi is the distance from this line to this line. We're only going half that far that's 3 pi over 2. So we need to pick the function that's shifting left 3 pi over 2. So A is shifting to the right, C is shifting to the left. Remember, they're both doing 3 pi over 2 because of when we factored it out, you can see what's happening there. But we need the one that's plus because it has to go to the left. So our correct answer there is C. 2 secant, 1 third x plus pi over 2, because when you factor out that one third, you would get a plus 3 pi over 2, shifting to the left 3 pi over 2 from the starting cosine curve is exactly what we need. So my suggestion to you is on these uh, graphs, especially if you get ones that are secants and cosecants, think of it as the sine or cosine graph that goes with them, because that's less stuff for you to remember. If you can just convert it basically to a sine and cosine problem, um, you only need to memorize those two graphs and how they shift. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.